Hi there, welcome to Scrap and Coffee. So the final part of the flex folio, we are working on our A section, but first I'm going to complete the last part of the B section. Like I told you in the last video, I felt like I missed something, so I've added one more piece, and that's piece Y. That has two score lines, and tape on the dented side, and I'm minoring. Sorry, I'm tapering that half inch. So this piece will go on the right side of our B section and can also function as a closure. So I folded and burnished on both score lines. So this piece will have a gusset and I'm opening up the whole section and we are going to place this like I said on the right side. just before the second spine. So I'm lining it up uh, with the top and the bottom and where I can still see that score line before that spine. So give that a burnish and then I will close the whole left part of the of the section and then I will fold this one over and you can use a magnet to keep it closed or a swing tab or maybe some sort make a little insertion point or something so uh, I'm not adding a magnet for now I will see what I'm going to do with my matting uh, to the side on the closure so now let's go to section A and we are going to start with piece A1 that has two score lines. So we're just going to fold and burnish on those score lines. And this part was filmed a couple of hours later because at first I've made this piece. Um, we are going to make an accordion pocket on top of this piece and I've made it with a quarter of an inch gusset on the bottom. But I didn't love the way that it looked so I've decided to change it. And so I refilmed this part. So now we are going to work with a two that has three score lines on either side and one on the bottom and we need to cut something away so here on the bottom you have three little squares and we are going to cut out those squares and on the bottom we are going to angle it and on the sides we are going to slightly angle that so this is how we are going to cut that away and we do that on both sides There we go. So here again, I'm cutting at an angle on the bottom half inch flap and then slightly angle it on the three half inches on the side. So tape is on the dented side on this piece. So we're also tapering that uh, outside half inches on the sides. Uh, so like I said, tape is on the dented side, on the bottom half inch and on the two most outside half inches. So now I'm going to use my envelope punch board again to make a little slit in the top. And I just eyeballed this. What I did is I lined up my third score line, so the most inner score line, with the one and three quarter inch mark. And then punched it and I really have to use my muscles to punch through this cardstock so here I'm showing you one and three quarters lined up with that most inner score line so I'm doing that on both sides and now it looks like it's a really small slit but um, we are going to fold half one and a half inches inwards on both sides so it was actually a nice size. So I'm cutting away that middle piece. Just like we did before on the other pockets on the C section. Section C, that sounds better to me. There we go. And I'm also making a frame in this pocket. So for that I'm drawing a frame and I made it a five 
8 inch frame so I'm measuring 5 8 of an inch from the bottom or you measure 1 and 1 8 of an inch from the cut edge and on the sides you will measure 5 8 of an inch from your inner score line and on top you will measure one and a half inches from the cut edge and then when once we've drawn that frame we are going to cut it out there we go clean up the corner there and then I've got a piece of acetate to size, so I'm just checking quickly if it's the right size. And that will work, so we can place our double-sided tape on there. Just a quick burnish. And actually this piece turned out to be one of my favorite parts of the folio. So I'm really happy with how it looks in the end. And I removed all the tape backing and now we, we can place it on there. So make sure you stay in between your score lines, no overhang of tape. And then carefully burnish that on there. And once we've done that, we can start folding our score lines. So we are going to make an accordion fold. So on the sides, you are going to fold towards the bumpy side on your most inner score line. Press that down with your fingers and then pull back on the second score line. So towards the dented side and then again towards the bumpy side on the third score line. And then I'm going to burnish. So at first I fold on all three score lines. And then I burnish. I, I feel that gives me a better result. Then burnish each score line separately. It, it intends to get a little wonky if you do that. So again, I'm folding towards the bump on the most inner score line. Pull back, press it down, and towards the bump again. Then turn it over and burnish. And then we can also fold on the bottom score line. Quickly burnish that as well. And now first I'm going to fold in the sides. And then we are going to keep those in place by sticking the bottom half inch on top of them. So I'm pulling back that tape backing just a little bit. And hold it. And Right away press it down at the same time and then I'm going to fold that half inch over and press that down so it will stick and it will stay in place. I'm just holding it for a second although I think it's okay but so this piece will be attached on top of piece A1. So we place A1 with the folded edge on the bottom and we are going to attach the pocket on top of that with the opening on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the tape backing and combine it with some wet glue so I have a little bit of wiggle time because it's I found it was pretty hard to place it on your piece nicely it will fit on there exactly so there we go a little bit more wet glue than I normally would do but it started to ooze out I think because of the heat it was pretty warm the last couple of days here so make sure that everything lays as flat as I can get it on my work surface and then I'm going to start at the bottom corners and 
and then carefully lining up the edges and for that I'm just going to um, yeah, place it to the side so I can see what I'm doing. But I actually did a pretty good job there, it went on pretty straight so I was fine. And then just press down and burnish it on there and also check on the back if I don't go really wonky. It's better to see on the back for some, um, yeah, because of the trifold, the accordion fold. So I give it all a good burnish so it's on there and then this piece is prepped. So then we also have a closure for this pocket. And we're back again. So this is piece A3 and I'm going to use my corner punch again uh, with the scallop punch from We Are Memory Keepers to make that corner look a little bit more pretty. And this piece has two score lines again so we are going to fold towards the bump on the score lines. And then we can place this piece in our folio. So what you see me attaching here is the piece that I'm not using, but the attachment will be exactly the same. So that's not a problem, but you might notice the difference. So we are going to place this on piece A of the cover. And to determine, I want to have it centered. So I'm going to find the center of piece A, and that will be three and a half inches from your uh, edge. And then I am going to mark two and a half inches from the center on both sides. Just make a little, little pencil mark there. Then I make sure that I am folded on the half inch flap. And I am removing the tape backing and I'm going to line this piece up with the bottom of the cover and making sure that I'm in between those pencil marks. And I place my bone folder on my folio to keep the piece flat. That can help, makes it a little bit easier. So that's attached on there and then the closure will be attached on the top of the folio. So I'm going to turn the folio upside down. Again, I am going to use my ruler to find the center of the uh, section A and then mark the two and a half inches from the center on both sides. And use that as my guideline. So again, make sure you're folded on your half inch flap. Remove the tape backing and line it up with the top of the folio and stay in between those pencil marks. But you also want to make sure that you're lined up with your bottom piece. But that's it's a long piece so you can uh, place it to the side a little bit. But especially when you place your magnet you need to take that in account that it's straight. So I'm not placing my magnet at this point because I don't have any stability underneath the piece. I'm going to do it after I've placed all the other pieces on my A section. So I'm going to leave it like this for now. So now when we close this and I do, I have that extra quarter of an inch here so it closes nicely. It will fit all in there pretty nice. So then we have piece A4 and piece A12 and A12 was uh, something that I added on the end so that's why it's A12 but it's better to place it now instead of on the end. So both pieces have two score lines and we are going to taper that half inch. And these pieces are just a little under the measurements uh, of the folio so they can fit in between the score lines of the pieces that we've just placed. So I'm folding on both score lines here and I just prepare both pieces at once. And then we can place them in the folio at once. So we are going to open up 
uh, the feature that we've just placed and then I am going to place my piece A4 on the left of the folio and A12 is going on the right side of the folio so I'm just going to line this up with the edge completely to the edge of the folio so make sure you fold it on your half inch again and here we are going to line it up with it with the edge but also making sure that we are in between the score lines of the pieces on the top and the bottom so you can fold those over nicely without anything bumping into each other so that's the first one and the other one is going on the other side so again we are lining it up in between those score lines and we are going to make sure that we are still able to see the score line just before the spine starts so you can also fold your folio closed nicely so I'm keeping my eye on those score lines And here with pulling on the tape backing my piece just moved to the side so I need to adjust that and then we are okay so this will close on top of each other and that will go over so what here already I was doubting about that quarter of an inch that I gave this pocket and I just couldn't let it go so I've changed it then we have our pieces a5 two pieces two score lines and we are going to fold on both score lines on both pieces these are flaps that are perfect for a 6x4 photo And on one we are going to make a window pocket so for that we have piece a six three score lines tape on the dented side and on the back side of this on the bumpy side I draw a five eight of an inch frame so for that you will draw a line one and one eight of an inch from the cut edge on the sides with a score line and on a side that doesn't have a score line, you will go 5 eighths of an inch from the cut edge. And we are going to cut out that frame. And again, get our piece of acetate, making sure I have the right piece here. And place our tape. So once we've done that and gave it a quick burnish, we can remove all the tape backing and stick your acetate on your cardstock. Again, like always, make sure you're in between your score lines and carefully burnish. So once we've done that, we need to miter the corners of the pocket. So this pocket you can place a photo in there on the top and we are going to fold the score lines and burnish them make sure you don't have any overlapping of your half inch flaps and then we are going to take one of our a5 pieces and place it on top of it so we are going to make sure that our folded over edge is on the left underneath the piece on the work surface and the opening of the pocket will be on the top and then we are going to place that on there and it should fit perfectly on your piece So 
So lining up those bottom corners and then move it towards the top along the edge. And so that's our first A5 piece and on the other one we are going to make an additional flap. And for that we have piece A7 that has one score line and we are going to taper that half inch fold and burnish on that score line and then we are going to place that on the outside of piece A5 so again make sure that your folded edges on your left and your half inch of A7 is on the top and that's how we are going to attach it and it should fit on there perfectly and otherwise you might have to trim it slightly down which you, because you don't want to have any overhang so i'm removing the tape backing parsley and i'm turning the piece over so it's upside down so my folded edge is now on my right and my half inch is on the bottom it's just easier for me to attach it that way So I'm placing it and then remove that tape packing. And I am going to use a magnet to keep that flap in place here. So it doesn't really matter where you place your first magnet on the flap or on the piece. Just make sure that you're not too close to the edge of your piece so you can cover it nicely with your pattern paper and put the other one on top and remove that tape backing of that magnet and close your flap and press down on it a little bit and then i'm also going to place a little bit of double-sided tape to keep it all in place so that's the preparation of these pieces and they can go in the folio so open everything up again and they will go on the left side so i'm choosing here to place the acetate bucket on the bottom and the flap on the top i think that will work uh, the best with placing a photo in your pocket and when you want to open the flap it's not going over the acetate window but you can place it uh, either way both will work, but I think this will just be a little easier. So make sure you fold it on your half inch again. And we are again staying away about one eighth of an inch from the top of your folio. And one eighth of an inch from the bottom. And then you will have about a quarter of an inch spacing in between your two flaps. Keep an eye on that score line of your bottom piece here, but if you stay away about 1 8 of an inch from the bottom, you should be fine. And we are going to do the same thing with that top piece. And quickly burnish that. So for our next piece we are going to work with piece A8. <laughs> it's pretty hard for me to say. <laughs> Two score lines and Again, taper that half inch flap because it's going over the whole uh, height of the folio. And I'm going to fold and burnish both score lines.
And then we have piece A9 that's going to be a simple pocket. I'm just calling it simple because there's no window in there. You can do it if you want. Also, I was thinking about using the envelope punch board to make a little slit in it, but I also didn't do that. I just kept it plain straight pocket, but you can do all sorts of things with it if you want to. So tape on the dented side, miter the corners, fold and burnish, make sure there is no overlapping. And then we can place it on our piece. And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start at the right bottom corner and place it on this piece. So make sure you fold it on your gusset of piece uh, A8. And it's lying underneath you and then it should fit on there uh, pretty perfect. So make sure you line up the bottom and the two edges. And that's all for this uh, page. Kept it really simple on this one. You can all, always add a little bit extra but I think it's also good to have a little bit more um, uh, yeah, simple pieces uh, to um, yeah. If you have uh, something on every single piece, it's going to be too busy. So you need something to that's a little bit easier on the eyes as well. So again, I just removed the tape backing partly, and I'm bumping it up against that half inch of our former two flaps and. Make sure it's straight and stay in between the score lines. And it was a little bit harder for me to see here. So there we go, we burnish it and then we have one more layer to go. So for that we have again two the pieces of A10, same pieces, two score lines on both pieces. Again, this, these will have that one eighth of an inch gusset, so it can be a little bit harder to fold on. And here again on one of these pieces I'm going to make a frame pocket. So that's piece A11. It's a pocket, three score lines, tape on the dented side and on the back side of this again I made a 5 8 of an inch frame. So draw a line 1 and 1 8 of an inch from the cut edge on the sides with a score line and 5 8 of an inch on the edge without a score line. Cut it out, get your piece of acetate. Measurements for the acetate are in the cutting guide so you can just follow those and those measurements will work if you use quarter of an inch tape uh, or smaller. So I always like to place my tape on both the acetate and the cardstock, but um, it's not something that you have to do necessarily. It's just I prefer it and if you do it on one of the two pieces that will work just as fine. So I removed all the tape backing and I'm sticking it on there. And this frame, if I remember correctly, it will fit 
you can uh, f uh, when you put a 3 by 4 photo in there centered it will be uh, fitting in the, in the window exactly but the pocket is a little bit larger than the 3 by 4 but I hope you get what I'm trying to say so I'm mitering those corners again no overlapping I was just they were just touching here not overlapping so that's that's perfect and so we place this pocket on one of our a10 pieces so again I'm folding where my gusset is underneath the piece on the left side and the opening of the pocket will be on the top and then we will place that on there Also, I'm tapering that half inch of the uh, side flaps because this pocket is going all the way to the top of uh, your flap. It will make your insert a little bit easier and there is no overhang of construction. So I didn't do that with your A6 piece, but I do recommend you do it there as well. So now these, can two, these two can go in the folio and then uh, that's the last part of the construction. So we are opening all of our flaps slash pages up. See here I'm checking I didn't do it on that piece but the tapering of that half inches but I do recommend you do it. So now I'm going to place that window pocket on the top because the other one I did on the bottom so I wanted to change it up here and as you can see the A12 piece that we've placed in the beginning on our right side that will stand up a little bit and it's not able to lay completely flat because of the B section of the folio now I don't really mind but if you don't like it you can easily leave this piece out So again here for this piece I'm staying away about 1 8 of an inch from the bottom edge of the folio and for the top piece I'm going to stay away 1 8 of an inch from the top and then you will have that quarter of an inch spacing in between your pieces again. Here again I move my piece a little bit so carefully I'm just removing it. And that's it. That's the construction of the folio. So we can close everything and now I still need to place that magnet there so that's what I will do quickly. So here we have the two flaps, one with the extra flap and one with the pocket and then the simple page with only one pocket on there and again the two flaps, one with the pocket on top and one is just the flap. Close all of it and go place that one over the top. So for here, for placing the magnets, I've placed my magnet, I think I placed it on the closure first. But I'm not sure, so let's see what I'm doing. Yeah, I decided to go to the closure, but... When you have that slit that you made with your envelope punch board in the large pocket, then you might want to place it on your large piece first. So you don't make sure that you're not 
too close to that slit. So what's important for placing your magnets on this piece is that you are going to make sure that your gussets of these two pieces are nicely straight, um, standing up, and that you line up your closure piece with your pocket piece. Because that large piece, that pocket piece, intends to move to the side a little bit because it's so long. So make sure that everything is straight and then carefully push on your magnet and this can be a little bit tricky because you don't have a lot of support on the bottom. So when you've got it, then again I just covered it with some double sided tape and then it's finished. See again I'm just not happy with how this is going here so once we've closed everything and everything is filled up then this is what we have and here I have that extra quarter of an inch so I will make that a little bit thinner there and I think it's better. So that's the construction of the folio and I will be back with a final project share. Thank you for watching.